Sorry, YouTube Nation. Now you have a mic. I'm not going back to redo that. Uh, you have the formal definition of the derivative, which is right here. You can see that from what we covered before, it looks like the only difference is that instead of A, I'm writing X. And that's not a bad way to think about it, okay? So, you see operators that imply derivative. If you have F of X and you then write F prime, that means derivative. Another thing that means derivative is if you see this, dy over dx, that's an operator. And when I say operator, I mean things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, square roots, sine of something. These are all operators. We operate on expressions by using this. Now our operation is that thing. That operator develops its own branch of mathematics. Or d over dx, that's another thing that means derivative. Okay. So suppose that's f of x. What we want to do is we want to come up with a sketch for f prime of x, the derivative of f. I'm going to look at an x value right now of negative 3, of 0, and of 2. Can somebody tell me what is the derivative of f at x equals 0? I'm sorry, at x equals negative 3, x equals 0, and x equals 2. Zero. Everybody agree that the slope at those spots are all zero? So the value of the derivative at those spots are zero. So what that means is that the derivative graph is going to cross the x-axis at negative three, at zero, and at two. Are we okay with that so far? Tell me something about the slope behind negative 3. Everybody agree that it, it's like really negative, right? So if I were to plot really negative on the graph, where would you go? You go down here, right? So the graph is going to start down here. Tell me something about the graph between zero, or between negative three and zero. The derivative is positive. How do you show positive on a graph? You go above the x-axis, right? So, so watch again. So look at this, okay? So I'm below the x-axis because the slope is negative. I'm above above the x-axis because the slope is positive. What, what am I going to do after that? Go below because slope is negative, so I'll go below. And then positive. Oh my goodness. Talk to your partner and try to share anything that you know about this graph, graph A, and anything you know about graph B. Go. Talk. Anything. Say anything. Go. Okay. Who has something to tell me about one of these graphs? Tell me something. Henrik. Yeah, you guys remember when we sketched polynomials last year and we did that shape? 
That was an X of fourth. You maybe didn't remember the X of fourth, but you guys all know, as Henrik is going to say, what's the degree of this one? This is three, right? Isn't it interesting that when you go from the original to the derivative, what happened to the degree? It dropped, didn't it? That's something that we can really be able to predict. That's going to be very helpful to us. It turns out that a lot of functions are differentiable. Not all functions are differentiable. We're going to skip that box, but we're going to talk about some functions that are not differentiable here. Here's a case where a function is not differentiable. Anybody want to know, anybody know why this function is not differentiable at, at a equals zero? Discontinuous. Remember that word? Now you know why we talked about continuity. Continuity is important as you talk about what's differentiable and what's not. Sometimes people ask, what does differentiable mean, Mr. Gens? That means you are able to take the derivative of it. You can take the derivative of this function anywhere except for one spot, and that will be at zero. Here's another one. Can't take the derivative at a equals 2. We call that a corner. Can't take the derivative at a corner. Okay. Can't take the derivative at a corner. Some people say why. Describe the derivative from the left. It is negative. negative. Describe the derivative from the right. Positive. Positive. See how those are not the same? Actually, the derivative from the left has to be the same as the derivative from the right. It's another way to say it. Here's another one. This is the one that people get most confused about. And it would be right there. We would say at a equals 3, you cannot take the derivative. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that. That's a really good point. We would say that this is a function but we would say that the derivative at that spot would be a vertical line, wouldn't it? What is the slope of a vertical line? Undefined. So we say at a vertical tangent, at a vertical tangent you may not, at a vertical tangent you may not take the derivative. Okay? All right. We're going to move to example three right here. We're going to skip these two. We're going to come back to that right away tomorrow, but we're going to start with this guy right here. Okay. So we'll call us number one, call us number two. They kind of dropped right on each other while I was making the note. Sorry about that. So what we have is this is our function f of x. And what we would like to do is we would like to draw a graph of f prime of x. Okay. We'd like to draw a graph of f prime of x. The derivative. Describe for me the slope right here. Negative. Can you come up with an actual value other than just negative? What would you estimate that slope to be? I'm, I would like to say negative one half. Are we okay with that? So would you agree the slope is negative one half here? And here? And here? And here, so therefore, we have a height of negative one-half. Somebody describe for me the slope on the right-hand side. Positive one-half. Everybody okay with positive one-half? So I have a height of positive one-half. Can I take the derivative at that spot right there? No, why? Because it, which one does it fail? It's a corner, right? You can't take the derivative at that spot. So then my, my derivative cannot have a value at that spot. So the blue is the graph of the derivative of the black. This will be confusing for you for about a day and a half. And it's really then going to click tomorrow 
we have some, some I think, are good learning activities that people have benefited from in the past. Tell me anything about this graph. Anything about it. What does it look like? An M. An M. Okay. Anything else? Upside down W. Upside down W. Thank you. I mean, that's funny. You get that. He's a, he's a funny guy. A negative x to the fourth. And here I thought you guys were going to say it looks like a negative cosine function. That's all right. Um, it, it's kind of... <laughs> Tia just rolled her eyes at me. All right, so, um, so cosine function, maybe a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? All right. Tell me something about the derivative right there. It's zero. So therefore, the graph will go through zero at that spot. How about the derivative right there? Do I have another spot? Probably 3.14, but there you go. Describe the derivative here. So I should be above the x-axis. Describe the derivative here. So I should be describe the derivative between these two points. So I should be above and if I would have just started this a little bit differently because it kind of tapers off a little bit Kind of almost looks like a sine function, doesn't it? That's kind of interesting. We're going to do one more together. Maybe two. Somebody describe for me the slope here. So that's the derivative. The slope is always zero, isn't it? How about the slope here? Maybe maybe about one third? Something like that? Is it ever not one third? Is it ever negative? Always at a height of about one third. We pause there. Tomorrow you're going to be working within a group of two or three, and you're going to be doing a matching exercise together, and you're going to start to investigate these questions of graphs of derivatives.